Hi, welcome to JNA Voices for Change on YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I got a pretty heavy, heavy uh, video today. Um, I'm going to try to put it all as much as I can put, uh, and then I'll continue on with the series. The start of the investigation of Garen White and a paid official by Sunline Transit. Uh, and this is also to show you uh, that John Dorito uh, stepped up to the plate and did what he needed to do uh, in representing myself uh, and Joey. Uh, this is just one of many videos uh, to come and to show you that uh, individuals are put in, in place and not even their expertise. So, uh, Notice of expansion of investigation, uh, formal notice pending investigation, uh, encompass question regarding your YouTube post shows you following an unmarked Sunline vehicle. Your interview regarding the topic is scheduled. They scheduled a meeting when I when a video was sent to me anonymously, and I posted it on YouTube because. It's a big safety issue when you have a company vehicle. Well, let's just say a person driving erratic. Uh, and also you can, you're gonna listen to uh, what I tell uh, Brian Valenzuela from the safety department has nothing to do with labor relations and a second level hearing. Uh, this is just one of many uh, to show you uh, I have so many videos uh, stored in the database that I will be uh, putting out there. Some of them I'm going to put out there for those who uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, for those uh, members. So if people, uh, snoopers like uh, Sunline and their team uh, want to come snooping around, they got to pay for it. Okay, so... Uh, right here, investigator Garen Wyatt, right here, Garen Wyatt will be conducting the interview. So I'm going to give you a little taste of, of what I experienced, uh, and I'm sure Joey's experience. And again, these are my opinions, my, my views and only my views. I am protected under labor code 232.5, labor code 6310 and freedom of speech. Uh, complaining about a hostile workplace, uh, broken driver's seats, uh, lack of restrooms, lack of breaks, poor planning at Sunline Transit Agency. Uh, I am a, I was an operator of 26 years until they retaliated on me and Joey uh, for speaking up on unsafe working conditions. Okay, let me uh, let me get this uh, video playing here. Uh, uh, I'm here to ask you questions about uh, the company and how long it's been running, whether or not you reported to Sunline, whether or not you had any understanding of whether you needed to report it to Sunline and things like that. So, um, so I let, let me let me just get into this. Uh, this also is going to attack uh, uh, a business that has nothing to do with Sunline. Uh, and, uh, again. This uh, clearly shows retaliation. And that uh, there is a slight crossover between your personal life and, and Sunline in this questioning, but because of uh, it carrying over to Sunline, that's the reason they've asked me to, to look into it. So that's the general nature of uh, uh, the allegations. Um, all right. He disappeared off the screen. Oh, no, I was uh, turning my phone on silent. Okay. So you, did you hear what I just said? Yes. Okay. All righty. Um, any questions before we begin? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, as previously in the other interviews, Anthony, you're welcome to record, but you can't share that recording while the investigation is ongoing. I'll say that once more on the record. I am going to start recording right now. And... and this investigation is over uh, because he is he is paid by Sunline for Sunline, so this is pretty much a waste of time. 
Today's date is Monday, August 15, 2022. The time is 1.04 p.m. I'm Gary White, private investigator, conducting an investigation on behalf of the Sunline Transit Agency, investigation 22-37. I'm conducting a Zoom interview with Anthony Garcia, Anthony, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, Garcia, G-A-R-C-I-A. He's a motor coach operator with Sunline Transit Agency in the fixed route division. And also present via Zoom is his uh, union representative, John Dorito. John Cummin, Dorito D, small i, capital R, I T O. Uh, Mr. Dorito is the, an, an executive board member at large for the AT1277. Um, and as we begin, uh, I am recording. Anthony, are you recording? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, as I said before we started recording, uh, it's your right to record this interview, but you can't share it uh, outside of this investigation because this is a confidential investigation. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to give you your uh, Garrity rights as we have in the others. Um, you are hereby ordered to fully cooperate with the investigating official, which is myself. Your failure to cooperate will create an objective and subject subjective fear of termination. You have the right you have the following rights and responsibilities during this investigation. You have the right to be informed of the allegations involved, which, as I said before we started recording, involves uh, your off-duty uh, company, um, Ultimate Cre or Unlimited Creations uh, Inc. Um, you will be asked questions specifically directed and narrowly related to the performance of your official duties. Statements made during any interviews may be used as evidence of misconduct or as a basis for seeking disciplinary action against you. Any statements made by you during these interviews cannot be used against you in any subsequent criminal proceedings, nor can the fruits of any of your statements be used against you in any subsequent criminal proceeding. If you so request, a person of your choice may be present to serve as a witness during these interviews, and you have uh, John Dorito here uh, with you via Zoom. If you refuse to answer questions relating to the performance of your official duties, you may be subject to dismissal. Do you understand those uh, obligations and that you are under in order to answer questions truthfully and yes. to the best of your ability? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't need to go into your whole history, Anthony, but my understanding is you've been a motor coach operator for uh, 26 years, uh, primarily on the on the fixed route division for Sunline Transit Agency. Yeah, 26 years. That, that that shows you right there. 26 years. Proof is in the pudding. Is that accurate? Um, yes. Okay, and you've been on administrative leave since uh, May 18th. Is it May 18th? Let me see. Let me get my notes here. That's the date of the letter that I have that you served your. May 18th? Yes. If that's what you have written down. Okay. Um, it's come to the attention of Sunline that you might uh, have a um, limousine company called Unlimited Creations. Uh, are you familiar with that company? Yes. And what is your role with that company? Uh, what is my role? It's our business. So we operate. We have yes, we have two limousines. If uh, I don't quote me on that, because I'm not really okay. okay. But it's, been, it's been a number of years. Yeah. I know my good on it on his day off. Are they licensed by the DOT? You know, your PUC certification on this company operating? Uh, yeah. Okay, a little bit back for me. I'm taking notes. So, yeah. you got Tommy. Edward. Uh huh. Uh, with Daniel. Yes. Uh huh. Tanner. Who's that? How do you feel like that works? Or is it all word of mouth verbal communication from? Okay. And Tommy is. And how do they know? Have you, have you filled out any paperwork? Submitted any paperwork to something that you have this business? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm from here. So, yeah, HR is no longer there. And Monica's done. She's not selling a vehicle. That I'm aware. What requirement? Yeah. That I'm aware. John? 
Well, I'm not going to get you for your personal knowledge. Your understanding of the only direction regarding um, that I'm aware what of. What required? John, that I'm aware of. John? That's, that's what it, my understanding. Oh, no. John? You just read under T32. Is that your understanding of the only direction regarding um, And that provision that you just read under G32 is that your understanding of the only direction regarding um, that I'm aware of what requirement John, you said that I'm aware, John. Well, I'm, at, I'm, yeah. ask, I'm yeah. asking you for your personal knowledge. Oh, yeah. My whether, personal whether knowledge whether John's is, aware of something yeah. else. Afterwards. That's a violation, I would have been uh, told. Uh, so, um, Gary, if, if I may uh, ask a clarifying question, um, yeah, yeah. part of the last question you were asking Anthony if he drove, are, are you asking for records of Anthony driving or are you asking for records of his company providing a service? Specifically on admin leave, I'm asking about him specifically. Okay, that if Anthony's driving. Okay, yeah. so that way, that way he's has an understanding of what records he's actually being required to provide so it's just if he hasn't driven then he hasn't driven that's your question right but it would help if he would provide the records so i can physically uh look at them to help substantiate what he's saying see that okay <laughs> um and then anthony anybody else that's employed at sunline uh besides do with what i do with my business as long as i'm not driving the vehicle that I, I would say that that would be none of Sunline's business. So I'll ask the question again, <laughs> and somebody smarter than me can determine whether it's Sunline's business or not. Do you have anybody else employed for your company that also works at Sunline? Besides? What I hear you saying, and again, this is beyond my, my knowledge and expertise, Anthony. Uh, my, what I do remember in that conversation is uh, her calling the drivers a bunch of that's what what I remember most about that uh, and she said it yeah. twice yeah yeah you, you you said that several times that wasn't yeah. my question Anthony. Yeah. did did you tell Lauren that you had a secondary employment did I tell Lauren yes uh, I don't remember that that came up okay B was uh, the VCR records that that I felt they were throwing away because I was complaining about driver seats and an unsafe uh, working condition. Maybe that's what they got fined on. Well, that's not the information that's being relayed to me. Okay. Um, well, I, I will call the CHP and uh, and uh, get confirmation of that. That that's uh, that's what happened. Yes, to Anthony. That's fine. Yeah. Um, at any point when you've been operating your business, has anybody from Sunline asked you to provide your records to Sunline? No. So what I'm going to do is this, this would be a long video. I'm just cutting bits and pieces. Uh, but if you want to watch, I, I'll uh, upload the, the full interview, the full interview uh, for those uh, paid subscriptions. So Sunline, if you want to watch it, you must pay for it. You want to watch the whole thing along with a lot more videos that I, I will be posting. You got to pay for it. Or any questions you'd like to clarify? Uh, John, uh, responding. no, no, I, I, I did have that one earlier. Um, no, I, I think I'm kind of in shock, like Anthony is, as far as um, that this is coming up now um, in this investigation. Retaliation. Um, I can't my, answer that. Yeah, no, my understanding, uh, you know, as an officer, uh, I've been assigned to the yard approximately about four years now, and. Uh, my understanding was always general knowledge that he had a limo company. And so I believe if records or anything were ever requested of him, he would have given it to them. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you gave us a date of May. Um, 
that he's been on on administrative leave. Um, do you do you happen to know offhand? I kind of lost track. What number of interview is this? Is this are we on three or four? I think this is four because um, there was an initial one on June twenty eighth, then July fourteenth, August fifth. Um, okay, and then uh, just so that you can you can both keep it clarify keep it separate. Um, I believe this is a completely separate matter than the other. So this will be under a, a different report. It won't be combined with everything else. So what dates did you say you, uh, each investigation? What can you give me those dates again? The interviews? Yes. Um, I, the ones I just gave you were off the top of my head, but I believe it was June 28th, June 28th, July 14th, July 14th, August 5th, August 5th. And then today. Understanding, yes, uh, this is not related. It's not in. Because it's a separate matter, but it's all on the same paperwork of this galley hearing of termination. And I, I will show you that documentation that shows that. So uh, we're going to continue on. Anyway, related to. Uh, the YouTube posts and your your allegations against Lauren or anything like that. This seems to be a standalone thing that that <laughs> they learned through a CHP inspection of your company and they during an audit. And so that's what I'm looking into. Um, so do you happen to know? Sorry, um, do you happen to know that uh, for the citation that was issued, um, are they requesting? Anthony's hours or they're requesting information regarding his business. The way it was phrased to me, and I haven't seen it in writing, but the way it was phrased to me was was that CHP, when they were on site doing an audit of STA, specifically asked for Anthony's logs of his business. And when C uh, STA couldn't produce those, they were issued a citation. Okay, that well, I, I just find it interesting because like he hasn't even been driving since May. Right. Um, so is there is there a, is there a way we would get a copy of that citation? Um, I think you would have to request that through the agency. Um, okay. I, I will obviously be requesting it as part of my investigation. Um, uh, trust me, I'm not I'm not here to find against Anthony. I'm here to investigate the facts, and the facts right. at this point yeah. seem to suggest that that there's a belief that Anthony should have reported reported those hours. I don't have that in writing and you have to get with the chp and figure out where that rule is and everything so okay and it, it to me it just seems that the onus would be on sunline if they're turning in logs of all their employees right that they would have to turn around to their employees and say hey do you have any logs to give us uh, but anyway okay <laughs> i think we're all in the we're all in the same boat because we're all doing this to this one right <laughs> okay i appreciate it yeah, so uh, I can't answer those questions for you. Obviously, that that will be part of my investigation and determination where the onus falls to. You're right. So, but at this point, I can't answer those questions for you. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Anthony. Anything else before we end? Uh, no. Well, I mean, one one thing is that are they gonna are they gonna pull are they gonna go through every employee? Very well, could be appropriate moving forward. Yes, I. But I don't dictate policy or procedures for them. I'm just investigating this specific one about uh, your secondary employment um, as it relates to a potential bio violation of the MOU. But as you pointed out, the MOU is pretty vague and just saying that it needs to uh, can't con conflict with. So, okay, so so that's just to protect the integrity of the investigation. Um, you are protected against retaliation as a participant in this interview. If you believe that you're being singled out or treated differently because you spoke to me, I know this seems like it's being piled on. This this wasn't my doing. It came up, and I got to look into it, and I will. But I, quite frankly, um, I don't see anything in the in the MOU or the or the uh, employee rules at this point that require you to. Um, to notify Sunline in writing, I'll have to do more, more looking to and talk to the CHP and see whether there's any regulations that you've been provided with 
from them that says you should, but at this point, it, I'm just kind of here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, also, uh, the Scali hearing was conducted by David Estrada. Right here, Scali determination hearing. And then it went into second level. Uh, um, <laughs> they, they, they put individuals here that know nothing about uh, that department. Uh, labor relations like they say uh, they they put in these uh they're considered uh, to me they'd be considered the fall guys the fall guys so i'm going to play you a little bit of uh the second level hearing conducted by brian valenzuela and doesn't know he's part of the safety department he's not part of labor relations uh tina or uh from what i understand tina is part of that department but why isn't she conducting these videos i mean these interviews why isn't isabel conducting these uh uh meetings uh it, it just goes to show you that they will be the fall guys again uh the full video will be posted for members only uh so Sunline wants to see it, the whole video, they got to pay for it. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Valenzuela. I'm the Deputy Chief Safety Officer here at Sunline Transit Agency. And I will be the hearing officer for today's meeting. Uh, Daisy Rodas is also present with us this afternoon. She is the Senior Administrative Assistant, and she is present here to take notes. Um, at this point, I would like for uh, the union representative to please introduce yourself for the record. Poor Brian. It's not your fault, okay. Brian. My name is uh, John Dorito. I'm the uh, even look executive good. board member at large for ATU Local 1277. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dorito. Um, Anthony, could you please uh, state your full name uh, to confirm uh, your attendance? Anthony Garcia. I thank you, Mr. Garcia. Okay, so today is uh, October 20th, 2022. The time is 3.14 p.m. and we are meeting via Zoom. ID number is 876-6841-5993. Uh, we are here at the request of the ATU that Sunline Transit Agency hold a second level hearing regarding the termination of Anthony Garcia from his position in the operations department. Um, Anthony, this hearing will provide you and the ATU with the opportunity to respond to the decision to terminate your employment with Selling Transit Agency as of September 7, 2022. Um, as a quick review, Mr. Garcia, um, on October about, uh, 23rd, 2022, 23rd. you received a scally packet of stating the charges against you October and the proposed 23rd. discipline of termination from employment. Um, on August 26, uh, 2022, you attended a Scali hearing, which provided you the opportunity to sense. respond to the charges and the Scali documents. On September 7th, 2022, you were informed in writing that your employment was terminated. On September 9th, 2022, your union requested a second level hearing. And now by... Did you see that? It didn't even make sense. He said October 20th. I mean, October 23rd, they, they gave me a packet. How do we, how did I get in a packet on October 23rd when we're having a meeting on October 20th? Doesn't make any sense. That's that right there shows you this is not his department and it's not his fault. Brian Valenzuela has been put, put up uh, to this uh, second level hearing and it's not his fault. He doesn't even look the same. Look, look, look at he's not the same he's not the same brian i've known uh he looks he looks depressed and uh unprepared maybe uh the uh, uh hostile workplace is uh really getting to him a mutual agreement uh the second level hearing was scheduled for today october 20th 2022 uh, Mr. Garcia, um, I am prepared to listen to any additional information or explanation you may have. Okay, so he's prepared to listen. 
I want you guys to listen to this. Uh, Mr. Garcia, um, I am prepared to listen to any additional information or explanation you may have as to why you should not have been terminated from your position within the operations department. Do you wish to make a statement at this time? Uh, be before the statement, uh, I, I would like to know, uh, like I said, my question again is uh, the, the letter received was from labor relation with no name on it. Uh, uh, where So I got the letter. It had no name on it and from labor relations. <laughs> they don't want to sign their name on it. Something uh, they're hiding something where it came from in uh, this new first time email that was sent to me uh, for the Zoom uh, from Labor Relations. Uh, I don't know if this is a new uh, uh, position there at Sunline or it's uh, they just changed the name to Labor Relations because it doesn't have any name on the bottom. So uh, I don't know exactly who sent that letter. And uh, for the record, uh, Daisy uh, Rhodes wrote us is uh, whose assistant that's taking notes. Uh, okay, thank you for that question, Mr. Garcia. So Daisy wrote us is the, assist, the senior administrative assistant for the safety department. And she is here exactly. uh, to take safety department, not labor relations, safety department. What is the safety department doing uh, anything that has to do with labor makes no sense. Sorry for you guys, man, but I I believe that all these people that are conducting these meetings uh, will, in time, be the fall guys. Notes. As for the letter, uh, there has not been any changes in the labor relations department. Um, I can find out uh, more information for you um, in regards to who sent that letter. Exactly. He doesn't even know. See, that's not even his department. He doesn't even know anything about labor relations. You would think that he would he would have responded to who sent that letter. Okay. So, Mr. Garcia, uh, do you wish to make a statement at this time uh, in regards to the termination from your position within the operations department? Uh, I, I wish to add. Uh, 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 a law that was put into place by Gavin Newsom as signed as a landmark bill uh, restricting the use uh, of lyrics and evidence in court making California a fa uh, the first state to now have such a law at AB 2799. Okay, AB 2799. Uh, Thank you for the Yeah, uh, I just I want to add for the record that that uh, when complaining about unsafe working conditions, nobody listened. Yep. And uh, when uh, also uh, they say they have a, a company policy uh, that was not uh, signed into place when I started because social media didn't exist. Uh, I want to know, I'm asking you a question, where did I sign on a new social media uh Pro prohibiting from uh, posting anything on social media that pertain to safety issues. Well, Mr. Garcia, uh, I do not have that document with me as far as uh, a signed document. Thank what you. I do understand is thank you. He don't have a, he don't have a signed document, guys. This these policies that they put in place. They when you started the job, they make you sign all these all this paperwork. That didn't exist when I started. So let's let's continue on a, a little bit, and I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, John Dorito in action. Uh, let, where, where's my hat? Let me give you my John Dorito. I toast. I toast. Uh, empty cup, but it says expose. I toast to your great work that you did. Uh, I will give you a taste of it, and then. I will be posting the video at a later date for the members. Policy. Okay, uh, so, so, so I, I want to that... let you guys know, this is nothing personal towards any individual. Uh, and, and I'm not bringing this up to get anybody in trouble. I'm bringing this up as a statement of uh, an individual uh, 
that film the whole property on pumps and that day Lawrence Giver uh said that she didn't want nobody filming around the pumps because of terrorists and and all this other nonsense but it wasn't because of terrorists it was because I was filming the broken driver seats the unsafe working conditions lack of restrooms and break times that I had with Lauren and Brittany on January 27th uh I believe that was the 26th, but uh, it, 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 I do talk about that. And I, I do, I am going to show you, I'm going to show you the video uh, that was, that was, there's nothing wrong with it. And I, I believe that uh, he might have done it for, uh, because he was proud to, uh, he was proud to work at Sunlight and showing his kids, uh, uh, the place that he worked and being proud. Uh, there's never been an issue of being proud of where you work. Uh, I've always been proud of where I work and uh, showing off uh, and, and pictures, videos of where you work because that makes you proud of where you work. Uh, old regime, new regime, uh, nothing was ever brought up on not being able to film um, on different parts, you know, with your uniform, but it only became a problem when I started bringing up safety issues, uh, broken driver seats, unsafe working conditions, uh, lack of restrooms. Then it became a problem because I was going to the board. I was, I was putting her out there. I was bringing the issues up because nobody would. I, I me and Joey would, would bring up a lot of different issues, but mainly, the 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 safe the seats and the lack of restrooms. I started doing videos because it, it it was affecting me and my personal health. So that's why I brought it up, and I've been bringing it up for years, and nothing was ever done until I started filming. Oh, like John John says, that's when the snowballed. Uh. She stated that uh, at that time it, it was I was filming uh, broken driver seats and uh, unsafe uh, working conditions, lack of restrooms. Page fifty three and fifty four. Yes, sir. Um, would you mind uh, telling us what that actually says? I don't uh, think I have a copy of that. Uh, yeah, I can, handbook. I can go ahead and read it off to to a copy to of this that. group. There was uh, a copy in there. So uh, may maybe many of the other uh, new employees didn't get that in their copy. So uh, I know Sunline's watching. Maybe you ought to make it a point that individuals sign uh, uh, employee handbook, uh, not a non-disclosure agreement, but an employee handbook. No, I, I was just going to ask a clarifying question of as to which part um, of that policy or that handbook that you just read, uh, that Sunline is proposing Mr. Garcia broke that warranted termination. Let's see. So he's got to go over his notes. Um, I can uh, I can look back into the material, but uh, at some uh, occasions. Uh, there were other contributing factors besides just this uh, policy. Okay. Uh, Anthony, you were going to say something? Okay, so I, I want to read the, the labor code, the 232.5. Prohibits an employer from discharging or retaliating against an employee who discusses or discloses information about employers working conditions those are that's those are labor laws labor laws protect uh it, it supersedes any any policy and and in connection with uh safety so uh that's all i have at any point did you feel that you were retaliated against yes sir okay thank you and, and I feel like even more so retaliated on 
uh, based on uh, uh, going to the board meetings and exposing uh, unsafe working conditions. And uh, also, uh, if, if we want to talk about harassment and, and uh, uh, discrimination, uh, Lawrence Skyver on that meeting at, on see, it, it's getting heavy. It's getting heavy. It's getting real heavy. Oh, well, uh, they, they denied your claim. Uh, we can't see you no more. This is all falls into retaliation. Uh, Mr. Garcia, at any point did you ever receive any sort of, uh, or were you able, able to get a hold of any sort of paperwork or something that supports the corruption uh, with uh, the doctor? Uh, the uh, the medical care uh, with that doctor. Look, look at yeah, John I'd like to add some statements uh, on Mr. Garcia's behalf. Check this out. Look at John in action. All right, Mr. Grito. Um, so in going through the packet, um, and there's quite a few issues listed here um, on the section on the on section three grounds upon which the charges are based, uh, which I'm assuming is for termination. Um, the agency on its own volition acknowledges uh, that they knew of the YouTube channel and what uh, Mr. Garcia was saying uh, back in April 24th, 2022. Um, and I just, I, I brought this up at the first, um, at the Skelly meeting, I'm gonna bring it up again. You know, in our MOU, uh, G20, Section 7, uh, subsection A, right, there is a limitation of 65 days of knowledge from an incident. So, um, you know, it doesn't seem like the agency is taking that into consideration um, okay. when charging Mr. Garcia with termination. Uh, uh, they're already beyond the time limit. I want you guys to see something. Look, look at, look at Brian, his, his, his phone rang and now he's getting texts. He's getting, he's getting schooled on, on what to say, uh, what to bring up. Uh, so this meeting was supposedly only myself, John Dorito, Brian Valenzuela and Daisy Rodas. He, uh, it clearly shows there's either the attorney or Lawrence Skyver in the background uh, telling him what to say. I think it's his attorney that uh, Irma uh, trying to get him to uh, respond because they are listening. But guess what? I record it. So I got all the footage and all the meetings that all the sit downs, <laughs> all the meetings. So remember that. Remember that. In that instance. Um, so when you ask him if this, you know, if he felt like he was being uh, harassed or if this was retaliation, again. section A, um, at the Skelly meeting, I'm gonna bring it up again. You know, in our MOU, uh, G20, section seven, okay. uh, getting text. subsection A, right? There is a limitation of 65 days of knowledge He's getting text. from an incident. So I didn't think um, the attorney was, uh, you know, it doesn't attorney. seem like the agency is taking that into consideration. I didn't think Sunline's attorney was supposed to be in the meeting. I thought it was only the four of us. And I didn't uh, think that uh, they were, uh, of course, they probably had us on a big screen with the attorney uh, on Zoom. That's what Daisy wrote us uh, job is because it clearly doesn't show she's taking notes. So, so the way she she's recording, I'm recording. How you like that? Um, when charging Mr. Garcia with termination, uh, they're already beyond the time limit in that instance. Um, so when you ask him if this, you know, if he felt like he was being uh, harassed or if this was retaliation, um, yeah, because they're not adhering to the MOU when they're kind of compiling this whole list. Uh, I think when it comes to Dr. Fountain. Uh, Mr. Garcia is simply saying that he is acting as a witness 
Um, there is no written proof. Obviously, there is no doctor going to write down on paper. Um, yeah, you know, this and this, or I was told this, and we kind of got to, you know, give you this sham. He's saying he was the witness um, to these actions that happened. Um, furthermore, in the next one of the other uh, sections here, where the uh, claim of using a TikTok uh, song was playing by Cypress Hill, um, uh, Mr. Garcia actually didn't have knowledge of the song until it was, uh, or this video until it was played at the Skelly, and uh, or was it at the interview? I don't remember, but the first time we heard it um, was the first time he heard it, and you couldn't even understand the lyrics, right? So there's this like leap being made that it has to do with these employees at Sunline, where Mr. Garcia actually doesn't even have interaction with these employees, right? If they're the same ones that Sunline is is saying that they are. Um, they're not somebody he sees on a daily basis. He doesn't have an interaction. He doesn't get assignments from them. It's so it's it just in his face. How he's looking at somebody. Look at. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's see if we can play that again. Ones that Sunline is is saying that they are. Um, they're not somebody he sees on a daily basis. He doesn't have an interaction. He doesn't get assignments right. from them. Yeah. So it just kind of was Several a leap. Um, you know, just really yeah. trying to like make this connection to uh, administer this termination. Yeah. Um, in one of the other ones, uh, reckless and false statements. Um, Get him, John. You know, it, it, the some of these statements that they're saying uh, Mr. Garcia made were actually at a public board meeting, right? So this is a public agency which has regular monthly board meetings and the public is invited and allowed to speak at these meetings. So uh, even if Mr. Garcia wasn't an employee at the time, he could be in that meeting as a as a public figure to speak his opinion. And that's what he did. So it seems like, again, the retaliation goes back to, well, because he's an employee that uh, he shouldn't have said those things. Well, he actually had some concerns that he felt weren't being heard at, at um administration right management wasn't really listening to him so he went to the board and then that seemed to really kind of light a fire um so and then again to echo that sentiment he also had a youtube channel which there he was allowed to post his opinions and so again it seems like sunline is using that to issue discipline because he was talking about Sunline, about things that he wasn't happy uh, that was happening at the agency. Right. Um, uh, then, you know, some of, one of the other things was the uh, verbal harassment and uh, abusive conduct towards coworkers. Um, the, again, uh, Sunline kind of bundles in these things where Anthony gave his opinion and uh, with opinions, right? He is acting as the agent of um, the witness, right? He is the witness of these events. So he's giving his opinion as to what happened. Um, the people that he had on his show, they are their own witnesses. They're giving account as to what happened to them. So for Sunline to kind of say, oh, well, you didn't follow up. Um, you know, he, our stance has been he's not a reporter, right? He's not He's giving his opinion on these things, on these matters. Um, so he's not there to make a case, right? Um, then I wanted to also echo with the, the uh, again, that TikTok video, right? The threat of violence. The only threat that is perceived is in the lyrics of the song that's attached. And Mr. Garcia already did touch on that, SB 2799, um, which is already being if, if it wasn't signed it's being passed into law um that lyrics cannot be used to determine uh that there that as a threat of violence right there is a fine line there between you know first amendment rights freedom of speech and what somebody perceives to be a threat of violence or what's going to be imposed on somebody and i don't think in that video i don't even think there's anybody speaking there uh that says you know, yeah, take a listen to this song. This is what's going to happen to you. Nothing, nothing like that, right? 
Um, so again, it's a rich on agency's part. Sorry, to, he had a bad connection. Uh, Mr. Garcia, in this kind of light, that he deserves uh, termination. And then, you know, finally, in well, in one of the other ones, uh, in the insubordination, uh, as far as during investigation, you know, one, I, I Mr. Uh, I, I believe his name was Mr. Wyatt, Garrett Wyatt. Um, you know, there was never any clear handoff of, uh, you know, somebody from management um, either getting on Zoom or being at the interview and saying, hey, this is the person we hired. He is given administrative rights. You are expected to answer these questions. I mean, what happened was the guy got in and he's like, yeah, I'm so and so. And uh, I have uh, the agency's uh, blessing to be asking you this and uh, you can be insubordinate. So, again, with that, OK. Um, what does it mean being insubordinate and what are the consequences, right? Is it that if you don't answer these, you're going to be terminated? I don't think those words were ever spoken. So that right there is an issue as well as not being clear about insubordination and the consequences of it, what it would mean. Um, then the other issue as far as unauthorized outside employment, G32, uh, in the MOU, right? Uh, is very simple. It's like a one line article. I'll, I'll read it to you since you did us a favor of reading the other one. Uh, employees are prohibited from engaging in employment outside of Sunline, which would interfere with their duties and the safe operation of Sunline vehicles. Okay, again, I, I believe we brought this up at the Skelly. Uh, Mr. Garcia doesn't have an attendance problem, he doesn't have a safety problem. He's never had any issues in regards to him being an employee here. Um, as far as I'm concerned, he's had a very good record. So I fail to see where uh, he engaged in outside employment that would interfere with his duties, right? It, it never happened. He always managed himself. He came to work. Uh, he did his job. Uh, as far as I understand, he got great praises from the people that he actually drove on the bus. Um, and then, you know, the insubordination to produce records, uh, he, in his own capacity, right, he attention. gave the pathway into how to obtain the records. He himself said, I cannot get these records, right, myself um, in regards to his employment because it's not his own company. But he said, but here's how you can do it. Right. You need to go get the records. You need to request it. You need to get permission or whatever. So as you guys can see that that uh, uh, clearly it, uh, one multiple texts, he's not paying attention. It's not as it's not Brian's department for one uh, or it's not important. Uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to end that video there, uh, and uh, I just have to say a uh, great job, John, and uh, we knew that uh, second levels, uh, I don't I don't believe anybody's ever gotten their job back at second level, uh, and excuse me, uh, when they, when they uh, want to terminate you, they'll terminate you, but guess what, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing swell. Okay, again, like I said, it's uh it's nothing it's nothing uh um uh, personal. I mean, I like manual, but I just want to I just want to show you guys uh the video was posted uh let's see what's it where is the date? Let's go in here. Yo, I am Rochelle's dad. We are here at Sunline. Um, this is my daily job. So this Sunline is my safety uniform. vest I have to have on when I'm how walking did, around the yard. Uh, I have my blue like shirt, uh, uh, blue pants, and job. black shoes. Okay, so, so I'm going to show you around and show oh, you wow, the butt. Show the butt. Our security door for us drivers. Show but you. that hardly ever happens. Over to our I'm gonna show you a really cool bus right now. Talked about the, the hydrogen vehicles. Uh, this is called our essential bus for all the essential drivers. I mean, all the essential workers. So what we did, we wrapped it. 
So this is for everybody that's working right now, helping out in the Coachella Valley and around the world. This is what Sunline end up doing. They end up wrapping this whole bus. So let's see, a big old thank you and to get Bob. I'll get you the name. Drawing on the bus. I, the, I Did a really good job. We have three buses up. like that. Wait, so and that's the very cool part. So if you guys ever decide to draw for Sunline, you'll be able to get your, your drawing on the bus if you guys end up winning. Like again, uh, so that I, happens a lot. This is normal. Happens once a year. Uh, but and the three same thing that lucky we get to pick out of the bus. That, that I couldn't do because these are the first, pumps. Uh, there was never a problem with this. These and this video, we, I'm going to show you. It was February 2021, and and there's for multiple the gas operators for the hydrogen ones. that we've done videos. Mm -hmm. Throughout Sunline, we're proud. We're proud of working there. You know what? This company has, you know, fed our families over the years. That building in the I mean, background. We've been happy so working there. The so there's never been a problem with so with uh, filming the on the property. And Again, this this shows you that the the problem that 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 we have is and they start um, every single bus that went out. And they start off by they didn't start doing anything until i brought up safety conditions broken driver's this. seats lack of restroom break and times them. then they brought up okay so this video uh let's see that we can get the um information on it let me see um Trying to get the information on this. See, one one year ago. Hi guys, welcome. My name is Emmanuel. Name I am Rochelle's dad. We are here at Sunline. Um, this is my daily job. So, this see. Well, that's when we were talking to Christy Hostage. Uh, let me see here. It's weird how some bus driver get retires at 35 years. Sunline paid for that advertisement, which is good. Um, they got 752 views. He should have gotten like five to 10,000 views. Um, 35 years of service. Okay, so th this is this is a video. Uh, that's 602, line 9. Look at filming the, the yeah, driver, yeah. the broken driver's seat. Leaning to the right side. It's been complained about, complained about, complained about. Sunline is the best technology as far as hydrogen and uh, natural gas fueling station. But look at the driver's seats. This is what we have to deal with on a daily basis. Okay. And they wonder why. We have our backs hurt because look at that old, old seat with a new cushion with the top leaning to the right side. That ergonomically, that's not safe for your back. Okay. Your body starts. Do you, do you, do you see this right here? Old, right here. Old the, seat the seats. With a new okay, cushion. Okay, so I want you guys to see this. Right side. October 31st, 2021. Safe for okay. your back. I, I started bringing up those issues. Is not okay. Leaning to the right side now, for eight hours. This ago. video. Hi guys, welcome. My name. Filming the property, saying that there that I couldn't do it because of terrorism, and this video was put into effect on February fifth, twenty twenty one. Okay, there, there's there's nothing wrong with you filming on the property, filming in your uniform, being proud of where you work. There's nothing wrong with that. There's something wrong with you filming broken driver's seats, unsafe working conditions, lack of restrooms, going to the board. All of a sudden, there's retaliating uh, at uh, Haven, the retaliation on the business. They they find they can't find any way to hurt me 
uh, they feel like they, they terminated uh, me and Joey, uh, 26 years of service. It's okay. The good Lord knows why. And uh, we'll be fine. We will be fine. I want to show you also the email. I want to show you the email of the Zoom. Let me see if you can get this. Uh, let me see if we make it bigger. Okay. Okay. The, uh, the meeting that I was talking about right here, it says labor relations. Mr. Garcia, October 14th, right? Second level hearing, October 20th. And they sent me the Zoom link, okay? It's not signed by anybody. Doesn't have anybody's name on there. Just says labor relations. Labor relations, okay? And this is a second level determination concerning termination of employment. Dear Mr. Garcia, correspondent constitute the second level determination by Sunline regarding its decision to terminate you from your position. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go slow. So if you guys want to read this, but I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I, I, I already knew that their mindset uh on terminating us and keeping us terminated. Um it doesn't show. Uh, second level, it says right here, Senior Administrator Assistant, John Dorito. It didn't talk about it, the attorney being in the background lis listening, uh, um, giving them information, trying to, uh, you know, help them out because, again, this is not his department and he knows nothing about labor relations. You are, okay, retaliation due to expression, alleged unsafe working conditions, broken driver's seats, blowing the whistle by expressing your concerns, raise these same claims earlier in the process. Okay, so it goes in and, and it's, it, in turns, it's still a termination. Uh, and it, it it's signed by Brian Valenzuela. Okay, number one, uh, this is not his department and nor his expertise. Uh, I feel bad for these individuals, uh, but that's all part of life. It's all a part of life. So, uh, again, this uh, video is a little long, but uh, I I'm going to start posting uh, other videos that uh, for the, you know, the membership, at least we'll get uh, Sunline to pay for them so they can watch the whole thing. Who knows? You might get, you might get a, a, a nice, beautiful audio of a nice meeting that took place. You might, you might get a nice rude awakening. Uh, I got to go through my four or five terabytes hard drives and start pumping out videos throughout my life and service at Sunline Transit. Complaining about unsafe working conditions, uh, lack of restrooms, lack of breaks, poor planning, uh, my views, only my views. This is j and a this is Anthony from j and a exposing uh, a hostile workplace, corruption, unsafe working condition. Like, subscribe, and share your thoughts. Don't be afraid for standing up uh, for unsafe working conditions. The law supersede company policy. Pay the piper. Uh, when it's all said and done, the light is at the end of the rainbow. Goodbye.